But we'll start from uh, um, this uh, quite interesting uh, overview on the pre-COVID uh, challenges that we had already in the past. And, and one of the things that I would like to emphasize is that sometimes we think about some of the problems that we're facing as directly connected with um, this go uh, global pandemic that has uh, created so much shock around the world. Uh, but many of the trends were existing already before. They were simply not accelerated and amplified as much as before. But I think COVID has been, as I will call it several times in this conversation, most likely an eco chamber that has amplified this, but it hasn't necessarily created none of the problems that you, at least you see here. So from the increasing uh, pressure on the quality that is today becoming more and more of a conversation. So the ways of exclusion that we have had in the world, they are a story that started at least 40 years ago. And it has a combination of public policy that never meant too bad, but uh, eventually ended up supporting um, uh, increasing widening of the gap. It goes into the fact that those who have access uh, are a small minority in comparison to those who actually do not have access. And that can be applied to so many different things. It goes in the conversation related to the change of global power around the world. I guess you start realizing in Australia as much as realizing the United States that the world is changing towards a different order. We don't necessarily know whether the order is encapsulated by the concept of China. We don't know whether it's about, uh, so like a duopoly between the US and China, we don't know whether new players will eventually rise or whether we're completely wrong and we haven't been seeing the uh, real underpinnings. But we do feel that somehow the global uh, institution are becoming sometimes weaker and look at how regionalized you currently are and how regionalized some parts of the world have become. You know, this is reflecting in not only in terms of geopolitics, but reflected in terms of trade, in terms of uh, mobility. So there's been definitely a trend that was starting already before has simply gone to the extreme in the last few months. We do have a climate um, that is basically asking for severe adaptation and restoration. Um, we do have the data these days that demonstrates that climate, climate restoration is actually adding roughly today $7 trillion to the global GDP, which is a significant amount of, uh, of capital that is now being injected into the economy because we are trying to uh, mitigate the impact of climate. More is needed, uh, but the climate change is a story that we had since several years. Um, back in, in my last Davos uh, in Switzerland in 2020, while I was talking with Yuval Harari, quite renowned author of Homo sapiens, he was sharing with me that when he first talked about climate change back in the days, the conversation could have been addressed with a relatively small price by every single nation in transforming our production into a more green production. Today, the conversation is difficult to achieve with just a small part of our GDP. The conversation in many parts of the world is still polarized. Uh, so we have to imagine this was uh, simply um, a matter of time that the, the problem became even more visible. But today we'll talk about uh, technology a lot. Uh, you are stakeholders of technology solutions. You think of technology not only as a means to an end, but much more than that. So technology has definitely accelerated massive progress, equally created the massive disruptions. Uh, to these days, my biggest concerns is the small medium enterprises around the world that fill the digital gap where they don't necessarily know whether digitally transforming is possible, whether the transformation altogether is a password, whether it actually really uh, can be done. Um, I personally have co-founded an artificial intelligence company and I have seen the prohibited cost of running AI and those costs for many parts of the world are still far from being implemented into the bottom lines. So how do we integrate the conversation technology? I think it's something that started back in time. COVID gave a spotlight that we definitely are uh, utilizing today, um, but the conundrum is still there. The global economy before COVID was moving into uh, some form of really slow, apathetic, and time anemic um, growth. Uh, we're still definitely there. Uh, government policy, as we will see later in the presentation, um, hasn't necessarily fixed all of this. Um, so where we'll go from there. And adding to the last two conversations as we're setting the contest together, 
you know, working age population in wealthy country are becoming older. Um, productivity in some extent is, uh, is becoming a compromise. We do have a fertility crisis around the world, and we do have actually asymmetrical distribution in which some regions are simply becoming smaller and geopolitically equally uh, less consequential. Other regions are growing at a very faster pace. Um, if I tell you which country uh, will rise by uh, roughly 50 million in the next nine years, well, the answer would be Nigeria. But at the same time, we're expecting countries uh, like the UK, France, Italy, or Japan to keep on losing uh, population because of this gap between the elderly versus the number of children born. And finally, you know, as an educator, I can tell you firsthand that education is uh, not necessarily uh, serving his stakeholder in the right way or his constituents. We do have to drastically change the way we're closing the skill gaps. We estimate roughly that by 2025, uh, the skill set required in the workplace, it will be 35% different from what we have right now. And if we expand in the conversation a bit more into the future by integrating the idea of how technology will equally change the nature of works, uh, jobs, we expected by 2035, roughly 65% of jobs that currently do not exist. So we are, ladies and gentlemen, right in the wake of one of the biggest transformations that started already before, um, was mainly accelerated throughout the last few months, and is mainly moving into its next uh, phase of development.